the saints, my brothers and my sisters um, joining us this morning in the name of my Lord and, and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue with our theme for this week. You're joining us for the first time. We're praying this week to God for faith. Faith that is, we spoke about it yesterday, radical. Um, not just the, the mere knowledge of the fact that we believe in Jesus or, or we are called um, the people of faith, but the kind of faith that is fully, fully, um, what's the word I'm looking for, but fully embedded in the word of God. We're praying for, for, for 110% if there is a percentage to be given of, of faith, where we basically take God and his word and live out um, every part and every piece of the word of God. Basically, we are praying uh, like Paul who said, I am crucified with Christ, yet I live. But the life I now live, I live. Basically, it is Christ, it is Jesus that is living inside of me. We're praying for that kind of faith this week. So if you're joining us for the first time, that's our prayer item. It's one, Lord, all for that faith. Today, um, we're going to talk about, uh, pray about the faith to build. And I'll go straight to our memory text. In fact, I'm in the book of Nehemiah today. So do yourself a favor. Go and read that whole book. In fact, I'm writing a book. Of it. Uh, the title of my book is called Andizi. I will not come down a relentless pursuit uh, or a relentless commitment to building our God-given life. Um, hopefully it's coming out at the end of this year. Our memory text is found in Nehemiah chapter 6, um, verse 1 to 3. It reads as follows. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it. Though at that time um, I had not hung the doors and the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me saying, Come down, let us meet to. But they thought to do me harm. It is Nehemiah was writing the book. So, so it's coming across as Nehemiah is telling us the story, which is really beautiful. Then verse three. Um, so I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work. So I cannot come down. I will not come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you. So this is Nehemiah's response to the enemy, basically, because I can't keep pronouncing those names this early in the morning, but the names are Sanbalat, Tobiah, and Geshem, and team, the rest of the enemies, as Nehemiah speaks to them. So our prayer item this morning is basically, Lord, may you give us the faith to build in spite of the enemy. And so what I, what I want to commend to you this morning, I we're just going to take a few lessons from, from the life of, of Nehemiah and the way in which he handled the enemy, how God showed up in the story. But also, we're just going to take a little bit of a, 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 a leaf at the mechanism, at the tricks um, of, of, of the enemy. So when we first encounter of Nehemiah, he's in exile, right? He's in exile in the land of Persia. He's among the group of Jews who stayed behind when the first, second, um, when the first and the second group of exiles were released to, to return back home. So while he is still in exile, he is now serving in the king's court as the king's cup bearer. He gets a report that the walls of Jerusalem are in ruins. The walls have fallen. And the Bible says he was so sad about the fallen walls that even as he was doing whatever it is that he was doing, his shoulders were down probably. I just picture him carrying the tray um, because he was the cup bearer. I just picture him carrying the tray with his shoulders down, with his countenance down, such that the king actually picks this up. But I don't, I don't want to go too deep in that, but I want to come to the following, um, that in fact, this may actually be a, a, the, the case with some of us today. You know, this may actually be the case with some of us today. The fallen walls or the, 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 the city lying in ruins can easily represent our whole lives or certain aspects of some of us, a uh, uh, certain aspects of the lives of some of us today where when you observe these parts of your life, it gives you a great sense of sadness. 
where you look at it and you are not happy with the condition that your life in. For some people, it could be your entire life where you find yourself in a situation that when you look at it, you, you, know, you are leading the kind of life that when you look at it, you are really, really not happy. Something in you is telling you, this is not the life that I am meant to live. So the fallen walls may be your entire life in some of you. But for some of us, it may be some parts of our lives. You know, uh, Perhaps your career is going well. Your relationships are not great, though. For others, the relationships are good, but the finances or the career is not going well. So parts of your wall are fallen or they are lying in ruins. For others, the finances are good. The, the family is good, but your health is not good. So this part, um, this portion of the walls of your life um, is, not, is not looking good for others. All the personal aspects are in place. Your career is good. The finances are good. Even your health is good. But your contribution to society, you look at it and you think to yourself, I'm not. I'm not very happy with how I'm contributing to society. Or you're even happy with that. But your spiritual life, um, there is a big gap. There's a big chasm between you and God. I often get people calling me and telling me, ma'am, I, I pray, but I get a sense that my prayer just does not even reach the wall and the roof of my house. Everything else is going well in my life, but my, my relationship with God. So I don't know which parts of your walls are lying in ruins this morning. I don't know if perhaps even your entire wall is lying in ruins this morning, but I want to tell you the fact that you are here this morning is God nudging you in the right direction. I want to tell you the fact that you are here this morning and you are not feeling good about that is what I, I like to refer to as a holy discomfort. God is not giving you rest. God is not giving you peace about this area or these areas or these aspects. In fact, about your entire life, God is, is making you restless. That is good news. But can I tell you the other good news? Nehemiah says that the minute the king picked up on his fallen face, on his countenance, on his sadness, he found favor with the king. Can I tell you something, guys? You are here today because you have found favor with God. You are here today breathing. You are able to take in oxygen and out carbon dioxide. You are able to put one foot in, in, in front of the other. You were able to, you have data this morning to join into this Zoom, a Zoom call. You have some means of feeding. You, we have found favor with God. And the more favor you find with God, the more he expects from you. Some of us um, have found what I call special favor, regardless of whether you have found favor or special favor. All of us have found favor with God, and that is really, really beautiful. But I want to say this, favor, the favor of God irritates the enemy. The favor of God irritates the enemy, and the size of the favor also indicates the calling on your life. The size of the favor indicates, is it the Bible that says, to whom much is given, much is expected. You don't believe me? Ask Noah. The first time, I, I was not even familiar with the Bible, but the first time I came across the word favor was the Bible speaking about Noah. Noah found favor. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. To whom much is given, much is expected. Look at the size of the assignment of Noah. He had to build a boat this size. The other person I, whom I absolutely love, who found favor with God, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, and the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. Look at the size of the assignment of Joseph. Joseph had to save the people of Israel from famine, but Joseph also had to save the nation of Egypt. So favor we have all found, but to whom much is given, much is expected. But please take note. But the favor that you have found also tells you of the size of the assignment. But even more, the devil hates those who found favor with God. The Bible, in fact, Nehemiah says, the minute he found favor with the king, he had not even gotten up to build the walls. Up rises Sanballat, up rises Tobiah and Geshem. So the minute God gives you favor, the enemy stands up in arms because the devil, the, the aim of the devil, God, is to stop us from building. So I'm going to take a moment or two and share with you the strategy of the devil. But please take note. You are here because you have found favor. That's number one. Number two, to whom much is given, much is expected. Number three, do not be surprised by the opposition. Do not be, you may be sad, but don't be surprised 
life and do not be deterred by the destruction and the pushing against and the opposition. It is the enemy, my friend, trying to stop you, one, from the favor, two, from doing that which God expects you to do from the favor that he has given. Listen to his strategy. And Nehemiah says, the first thing that the enemy did, the minute that they found favor and he, he went through and he's now in Jerusalem, ready, he had not even started to build, the enemy is already on his case. His first strategy, number one, he questions your identity and your purpose. Who do you think you are? Can you please allow me to go to my language? They say, who do, and the hand is on the end of, who do you think you are? To think that you can start a family, to think that you can start a business, to think that you can lead this community, to think that you can save the people of God. Who do you think you are? That's the first strategy of the devil. He is, he is questioning your identity. He is questioning your purpose before you even start. That's the first thing that he did. The guys had not even started. The enemy says, who do these Jews think that they are they are rebelling against the thing who do they think that, who do they think that they are that they're gonna come and build the walls here listen guys i don't have time to go into this but there are whole industries that are built around your dysfunction and therefore the devil cannot cannot have you fully functional because then that industry is going to go down i have no time to talk about those industries that's the first strategy to delete basically to delegitimize you to question your identity to question your purpose can i tell you something you are here because you have been approved by god he calls you a royal priesthood a holy nation he calls you that regardless of whether you are fallen or not a princess is a princess a prince is a prince fallen or not somewhere else he calls you a masterpiece you are here because you are god that's the first one the second one the enemy instead after delegitimizing them questioning identity and purpose he goes to their ability to do the work look at what he's calling them what do these feeble jews feeble jews thing that they are doing okay you know who you are sure but you know what? You can't do this. So who do you think you are? Is the first one. The second was, what do you think you are doing? He calls them feeble Jews. Listen to what he says. He says, even a fox can climb up and bring those walls down. And I and my response is, so if the fox can bring those walls down, why are you bothered? He's bothered because he knows what he's saying is not true. It's not true. And so the devil, if he fails to, delig to delegitimize you, this word I must drop too early in the morning, the next thing he's going to do, he's going to question your abilities. And if he can't get you to question your abilities, or if, even if he wins, because the devil piles up these things. So if he wins, or he can't get you to deal it, he can't deal it with you. If he wins, and he can't get to question your abilities, the next strategy. Because what happens, Nehemiah, his, his abilities question, we're going to talk about him, he doesn't stop. He's, he's being a delegitimized, he doesn't stop. Listen to what the devil, got, the, 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 the enemy does now. They go for the leader. Can I speak to the leaders in this group? Can I speak to the fathers among us? Can I speak to the pastors among us? The, the, the decree is out from the enemy. Kill the leader. Can I speak to the mothers who are raising sons here? Yeah. The decree is out. Kill the male child. That is the strategy of the enemy. So they go to Nehemiah. They say, come down. Come down. Let us meet in the valley of Ono. We've got something to say. And that is where we get the response of Nehemiah. All right, and we're going to talk about it. But the last strategy of the enemy. So first, delegitimize you. Second, um, um, question your abilities. Third, we want to go straight for the leader. Kill the leader. Kill the leader. So that if the leader is down, the project stops. The last one. We couldn't stop. We couldn't question his identity. We couldn't question his abilities. We couldn't kill the leader. Kill the project. That's the last enemy. Let us go straight for the walls. Listen, guys, I spent too much time on the devil. I'm running out of time now. Now listen to the response of Nehemiah. To the first offense of questioning his abilities, listen to this, Nehemiah 2 verse 20. The, 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 this is the, the response of Nehemiah. The God of heaven himself. Watch the direction of the response. The devil is down there calling you down, talking to you. He turns and he looks upward. The God of heaven himself will prosper us. <laughs> Therefore, we are his servants' identity, and we will arise and build purpose. So the response is never 
to the enemy. The response is never to the enemy. So that's the response to the one about who do you think you are? Listen, my friend, we are here, legitimate sons and daughters of God, called by the God of the universe. We are the servants of God. That is who we are. He has put us here to arise and to build. That's our identity. That's our purpose. That's the response to the first call down. To the second call down that says, who do you think you are. He does not even respond to the enemy. They go straight to God. Oh, hear our God. God says, please stand up and fight for us. They don't even answer the enemy. If you are going to build, my friend, consistently and successfully, stop going around and confronting people. Focus on the building project that you have. You've got your family to build. You've got your company to build. We have our communities to build. Stop focusing on the enemy. Take it to the Lord. Is it David who says, be still and know that I am God. And then to the third one, where they are going straight for the enemy. The plot is there to kill them. You know what Nehemiah says? He responds this time. He says, I am not coming down. And easy, that's what we say in my language. I am not coming down. I am carrying on a great project. I am doing good work here. I'm doing good work here. Can I speak to the fathers in the house? Don't leave your family because God has appointed you a great job to build sons and daughters, leaders of tomorrow. Can I speak to the parents here? I know the children don't listen. I know the devil is calling them down. I know they speak when you speak, but do not go down. The devil is going for your walls. Don't leave your building position. Can I speak, guys, to the civil servants and to the politicians in the room? You have been appointed and placed there by God to serve the people of God, to build our community, to build our nations. Do not come down. Can I please speak to the pastors and the elders in the room? I know people don't listen. I know I'm not to come my man. I know they gossip against you. I know they're plotting and scheming against you, but do not come down. You have been placed there by God to lead these people to the promised land. Take your eyes away from the enemy. Take your eyes away from the enemy. I am out of time, but can I just go to the last one? He couldn't question their identity. He couldn't question their abilities. He couldn't um, even get him to come down. So he's not coming down. Let's go straight for the walls that he is building. Let's go straight for the project that he is busy doing. There were, and, 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 and Nehemiah, guys, I love this. And I want to commend it to you this morning. He says, I'm still not going to go down. But God whispers to their ears. He says to the Israelites, he says to the Jews, guys, they're going to come for the walls. Now, we don't just build. We build and defend. We build and protect. So what, the, what Nehemiah then says that each guy, each of us now look at the portion of wall in front of you as the family. Look at the portion of wall in front of you as the community. Focus on making sure that you build that wall solid. Focus on making sure that you protect that wall. I am here as a leader, but each and every one of us. So can I speak to everyone here? All hands on deck is the message that the Lord is giving us this morning. All hands on deck. Each and every one of us has got to build. But we don't just build because the enemy clearly is attacking us. But you build with the one hand. Well, or a spade or a spirit level or a hammer or a, or a pliers, whatever it is that you are using to build. But on the other, the Bible says they were holding sword. And Paul tells us that the sword is the one Word of God, and we cannot build our families, we cannot build our communities without the word of God. And so I commend you this morning, my brothers and my sisters, we need to pray to God for the faith to build, for the faith to protect, for the faith to defend until Jesus come. Let us pray. Oh, no time to say cases with the but you have placed us here, human as we are, feeble as we are. In fact, some of us are listening to this message. They are saying, oh my goodness, I am already down there. Nehemiah, I'm San Balad called, I am already down. San Balad and the enemy called and I went down and I was trying to fight the enemy, the territory of the enemy. I am down. But thank you, Lord, for the promise in your words, my little children. I write you these things that you may not fall, but if you fall, 
you have an advocate. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the promise in your word where you tell us that the grace of God has appeared to all men and it brings salvation. Lord, I thank you for the promise of your word that there is now no condemnation. So whether we are building or rebuilding, we are praying this morning for that faith. We are praying this morning for that courage. We are praying this morning for that commitment. We are praying this morning for that relentlessness. And thank you, Lord, for being a God who is faithful to give us what we pray for, especially when we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>